Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. Uh, as uh, the guys introduced me, I'll be talking about con uh, converting ideas to tangibles or turning ideas into tangibles. Who among us doesn't have an idea, a great idea, that, one, that he or she wants to convert to something tangible? Who among us doesn't have a dream, and he or she wants to realize it? So actually, I want to share my insights about this topic. It concerns every one of us, I believe. So the main point about converting your ideas into tangibles, or the thing, if you get right, then you will translate your idea into something tangible very easily or smoothly, at least. It's about answering the what and why. It's not as simple as it sounds. Because what, are you going, what do you want to do, actually? What is your dream? You want to write the next top-selling novel or the next most visited website? Or simply, you want to build the next amazing product? What exactly do you want to do? Writing a novel? Somebody, when you ask her or him, what do you want to write? What's your novel is about? And they'll simply answer, come on, you don't know novels? Haven't you read them? Don't you see them? I just want to write one, and it will be top selling. OK, I'll go with that. But then why? Come on, Khaled. What are you talking about? I didn't accept that question. Expect. Why? Because writing a novel simply, why I'm going to write it, I want to be a writer. As simple as that. But trust me, if it was as simple as that, all of us here would have published their novels by now, right? So I'll be talking about the what and why and mastering it. It's not as easy as I said. But it's not easy because it involves confrontation, right? We are confronting ourselves when we ask what and why. And this might yield to actually talking to us as if we are crazy or stupid, right? People will point at you. What do you want to do? Write the next best novel? Huh. Yeah, tell me about that, right? And this is the judgment that you get passed on to whoever you are talking to. And that's a challenge. So how can we get through that? Three things. The first thing, I will actually share it with you through a story. I was a swimmer, a professional athlete swimming. And I started training at a young age. I grew up in the water. I really started to develop this harmony between my heartbeats and my exhale and inhale. <laughs> Not only that, I actually started feeling adrenaline pumping into my veins. And I can feel my blood circulations when I exercise, when I swim. But soon after I got into my teenage and my body started forming and my muscles started growing, nature started treating me really harsh. I had a dream. I wanted to be a champion. A champion from this region worldwide. Why? Because I felt that would be significant. From this region, a swimmer, wow. But as I said, nature was really harsh on me. And I actually wanted to change things. As you can see, I'm not two meters tall. I got into biology. How can I accelerate growth? How can I change this? But soon after, I realized I am wrong. Because we are not supposed to actually break the laws of physics. We are supposed to master them. We are not supposed to fight the universe. We are supposed to adapt it. Why? Because the most important thing is our conscience. As long as you are conscious, you know what you are doing, it doesn't matter how physical you look, how strong or weak, because it's, it's your consciousness. That's what makes us unique compared to the whole creation, right? That's what makes us unique. So use your consciousness to sincerely answer your whys and what's. Use your consciousness to master the laws of nature, of physics, adopt the universe. The second thing is that you need to be patient. Really, really patient. Because you have a long way to go through. A long way to go through to reach your dream or convert your idea into something tangible. And let me share this story with you. I started a project with a group of friends in 2007. Until today, it's not released in public. And whenever people keep talking to me, close friends, OK, what you guys are doing? And I keep telling them, why are you taking so long? Come on, what's going on? And they even get more frustrated and more angry 
Once I tell them, listen, you know what? Maybe actually we need a year or more to publish it to the public. I say, what? But once they know the details, once we tell them what and why we are doing it, what we are doing and why we are doing it, they simply get astonished. They get impressed. Wow. And look around, for God's sake. See the products, the great products you are using, the great novels you are reading, and the most visited websites you are visiting every day. They didn't get built in overnight, right? Things, great things, take time, and you have to understand that. So be patient, be patient, be patient. The third thing, you have to learn how to work with the smarter people. Yes, and let me share with you a quick story. The same project I was referring to, we started in 2007, we got stuck in 2009 with things. We wanted to get things going, we were struggling, so we decided, you know what, we need a new blood into the team. We need to bring a new talent, a new smartness. Maybe they'll open up our horizons. So we got a couple of friends to join the team. One of them proposed this idea. He said, you know what? Maybe to get things going, we need to take off all distractions. And how we are going to do that? Let's go to a hotel for a whole weekend. Just, just cut everything, focus on putting an objective, a milestone, and get it done in the weekend. First, we were resistive. Ah, oh, this is a new guy. Is he going to show off and stuff like that? But thankfully, Thankfully, we were mature enough to embrace that intelligent and smart idea. And guess what? We did it. And if they get the picture on the screen, you will see our picture sitting in the hotel working. And we did it. One last thing, actually, about working with smarter people. Smarter people can be anywhere, younger or older than you, on your right and your left at your back or, or up front. And let me share with you this small story about my young daughter, Fatma. She's five years old. So what happened is this. Fatma, we were going to school. Or on the way this, to school, her mom asked her, because of the traffic, she wanted to start a conversation with her. So she said, oh, Fatma, tell me, you're going to school. How do you feel? What's going on? So she simply replied, said, Mom, you know what? I actually love to be silent. Oh, sorry. She said, I don't want to say anything. So her mom was surprised. Like, why? What's going on? Is there something wrong? She said, no. Simply, I love to be silent when I have nothing to say. And it's as simple as that. It was very intuitive. And when you reflect on this, how many of us bluff too much about what they want to do or what they plan to do, or what they are doing, and why they are doing it, right? So the point is this. You can actually see wisdom through anyone's eyes, even a small kid, just like Fatima was showing her hands. And might be 70 years old, 40 years old, or maybe dead people, because they leave legacy. They leave literature, and you have to look at it, try to get your wisdom, try to open up your horizons. So don't let your ego don't let your ego become a bottleneck into converting your ideas into tangibles, into realizing your dream. Kill your ego. And maybe at this point, I should follow my daughter's advice and wrap up and get off the stage, right? So simply, three things to convert or to turn your ideas into tangibles. One is you have to adopt the universe. You have to master the laws of physics, the laws of nature. Second, be patient, really be patient. Work with smarter people, and you have to understand that. If you master these three things when you answer your what and why, then hopefully you will seamlessly realize your dream. You will seamlessly turn your ideas into tangibles. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Khalid.